people don't think about the fact that sound has a shape at all, and it does, and this really makes you think about that. And so it can be very shocking to walk into a room and there's, you know, paint dancing. My name is Emmanuel Fritz, and I'm an artist. My name is Colin Skipper. I'm a pseudo-acoustical engineer and an artist. My art mainly focuses on how sound and the tactile world interact with each other, focusing a lot on the use of technology. A lot of what I focus on with my artwork is light. Honestly, how light is being used in the material, just energy flows and, and things like that, which is, I think, how our two worlds kind of mesh together so well. There was one day that we, we came across these videos of cymatics, and we saw how sound affects the, the physical world in these very uh, measurable ways. We were thinking, how can we take it from a, a study, a scientific study, and turn it into art? How can we start making paintings and sculptures and capturing sound in different ways? Which is around the time we started looking more into why on earth is this happening? Because it was perfectly repeatable. As I played the piece, we had the same shapes happening. And it was amazing because the second that tone stopped, instead of it rippling out or anything like that, we were watching this pool of water just completely go flat again and just go back to null. First, it was mostly about studies on these very specific frequencies and shapes and what we could do with that, which has since evolved quite a bit. Bass Structures, the Mark of Sound, is a multidimensional art, music, and science experience. You hear music and you see paint just flying up in the air and working with music as different beats hit or different frequencies are pulsing through the canvas. We keep playing with the paint, adding and trying to manipulate that medium. So we go from these very explosive reactions more to a sculptural form that starts to take shape as the paint is actually filling in the, the pockets in the sound waves. So it's this very evolving sculpture. We were typically more interested in the process itself than the end result. Watching this painting take shape that we didn't have to touch. We're controlling it, but we're not physically touching it anymore. How many people are really going to be interested in a 40 hertz waveform? I am, mm -hmm. but that's not normal. <laughs> you know, all, so, the, all the engineers in the room are. Yes, <laughs> yes. To try to get it to something that is more relatable to a broader audience, we started bringing in more musical elements. We have Caleb Anderson, who's come on to help a lot with the music, to have something that's really danceable. Caleb really let us loosen up and jive with it a little bit. We're really interested in how the way that you put notes together changes not only the painting, but the way that the painting is, is moving. We also have Mike Lockerman, who's our director of photography, helping us document everything as we're going along. Taking pictures of, of our pieces and video of the work as it's happening. The uh, tall one there, we, we like to call Dr. Ig. It's a low frequency system, so when there's bass and, and other low frequencies, it'll move more. The newest is that little one right there. And it's fresh off, <laughs> off the presses. This is actually the first time that it'll be performing outside of the studio. We use a lot of synthesizers. One of the reasons for that is that we can absolutely completely shape the waveform by being able to tweak just the minutest little elements of the actual wave shape. I can really manipulate that. So we're playing with small little synthesizers and sequencers and then also using turntables to bring in some samples and manipulation. So we started by saying that the piece is done when the paint stops moving, when we can turn it off and it's not gonna change at all. The paint dries and kind of settles and then there's some really interesting things that have come out of there. 
You need a lot of power in order to get these higher frequencies, but also as the paint's drying, you need more power to continue moving it. And so there are occasions where the painting is done when we run out of watts, or ability to continue increasing volume. And it's become this very jazz conversation that we have with the painting. Art offers a really unique place to, to grow, to, to take something that you know and try to turn it up on its head. And that, for me, is a really important part of innovation. As much as we are amazed by these phenomena, we want to understand them. And with understanding, then you can go further and manipulate more. With this, we're trying to use sound as a, our brush, so we want to be able to control it in some way, and so understanding the technology is important in order to understand the tools and how to use it. It seems to, to reach people in a lot of different ways. All we're really looking to do is create intrigue and create excitement. Thank you.